Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, interesting stuff. First up, there's an article from Business Insider that talks about if that disease is anywhere, it's in that cash drawer. Workers are begging customers not to pay in cash at fast food chains like McDonald's and Starbucks. And why there's a super simple resolution to this whole problem, I think you can guess what it is also. President Donald Trump ponders halting stock trading grounding U.S. passenger flights, but there's one thing that he can't stop, and that is Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at a deep dive into what could potentially happen and why this is scary at first, but it could be the greatest thing ever for cryptocurrency and digital assets. Also, is a 7K Bitcoin on the horizon? Well, a Bitcoin price pullback is likely after the impressive 80% rebound and why I think we're going to go low to go super high in no time flat. And lastly, we're going to take a look at Russia's central bank seeks to ban crypto issuance and circulation. So interesting article about what's going to happen in Russia. And I just see this as playing out as another country that just happened recently. And finally, we're going to go over the scam of the day. So uh, thanks for everybody who's been helping me out with that. But we'll go over this the very last part of the video. But let's jump into tonight's stories. So first up, I saw this article as I was scrolling through the news feed, and I just thought to myself, how ridiculous is this? That we live in a time when we have access to, I mean, the easiest type of uh, use. We can use debit cards, we can use credit cards, but people still use cash. And the problem with cash is that it transmits bacteria and viruses quite easily because things are floating all over it. And uh, that's a problem. It's not a problem here in the United States. It's a problem all over the world. And China had this exact same issue. They were recalling money, cleaning it, and then shipping it back out. Now, there's a plan to do that here in the United States, but I see it's just ridiculous. There was a uh, quote down here. It said, it goes like this. If that disease is anywhere, it's in that cash drawer. And we're opening that thing every 20 seconds at least, said Nikki, a McDonald's worker who previously worked as a nurse. So the thing is, well, first of all, if if you're a nurse, I don't know why you're working at McDonald's. We really need you in the hospitals, not uh, flipping burgers. But that's that's besides the point. The thing is with with cash, when we're, when we're using cash, we're using it right now, we don't need to necessarily use cash. Of course, some people still use it. I still use it. I use it very sparingly. I cannot remember. No, I know I take that back. When I was in uh, Brazil recently, I did use cash because there was only so few places I could use my debit card, even though it was actually kind of accessible. But uh, the thing is with cash, if we could reduce the amount of using it, and especially with like cryptocurrency digital assets, or if we could just digitalize the dollar, that would uh, take a tremendous load off. Just put your phone up there, have it scanned, off you go. So I think it's a great thing. Now the problem is, is we're not going to move entirely to using, let's say, tomato coin for for all of our transactions in the world. Let's say there's a tomato coin for cryptocurrency. We're not going to go to that tomorrow. Just not going to happen. So, you know, there's plans to do what's called digitalizing the dollar. And this was from an article a couple months ago. And it talks about when will we see the digital dollar and crypto dad says soon. This is former CFTC chairman Chris Giancarlo, also known as Crypto Dad. And uh, he talks about during my five years of the commission, we saw this sort of new wave of the digitalization of our world that's taking place. He said the first wave was the digitalization of information and that's created the internet as we know it today, but we're seeing what some people call the digitalization of value or the internet of value. Basically what he comes down to is this. He says, since leaving the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, Giancarlo has joined the Chamber of Digital Commerce and he's working tightly with that group to digitalize the US dollar and get it on a blockchain ledger. What was interesting to, uh, about this is, first of all, this isn't some slouch. This is a gentleman, you know, this is Giancarlo, who was uh, part of the CFTC. Now he's joined up with the uh, Chamber of Digital Commerce to get this whole initiative pushed through. The thing is, though, when you digitalize the U.S. dollar and you digitalize the euro and you digitalize the yuan and you have all these different uh, digital currencies that are sovereign to each nation, they're all on their individual blockchain. So how are they able to talk to each other? How are they able to, to move across? There's going to be some kind of bridge that's going to have to come into play, or there's going to be have to have one world currency. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. I know there's other people that will say, yeah, it's right around the corner. No, it's not. I just 
don't see that happening. Uh, <laughs> countries cannot agree on anything. And maybe if we see the global reset, who knows? But uh, to take a look at it rationally, if we had to find some type of British currency or cryptocurrency that could do that, there's one in my mind, it's probably XRP. And here's the thing about that. Uh, Chamber of Digital Commerce, you know who works with them? This guy. Uh, Brad Garlinghouse was a keynote speaker at the DC Blockchain Summit. And this is for the Chamber of Digital Commerce. So uh, again, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know in business. And I think XRP and Ripple kind of work in that type of same fashion. Now, I'm not very happy with uh, Ripple right now and the, and the way that you know everything has been going on. I think later down the road, it'll work out. But right now, I just kind of look at what's going on as far as what type of cooperation and type of uh, businesses that they're all involved into and who knows who and what's going on behind the scenes. So we will see. Anyhow, moving on. Next up, this is a good one. Can't lock down Bitcoin. Trump ponders halting stock trading grounding U.S. passenger flights. There was a, a video from Token Metrics. This is Ian Bolina's little, little brainchild. And one of the gentlemen he, he brought on there, I forgot the guy's name, but uh, he was a person who was heavily involved in the financial sector. And he was talking about how Donald Trump was going to shut down the stock market. And at first I was like, that's crazy. Uh, but of course, on Monday it happened because there was a circuit breaker. Something happened where the stocks just took a big dump. So automatically, boom, it just switched off. But this is different because Trump and his administration are now saying, hey, uh, we need to just cut this out. Just like what this gentleman talked about before. So this is from uh, Token Metrics. Uh, they had actually asked me to evaluate their um, their site and how they do things. I'm still not done with it, so I'm not sure if I'm going to really endorse it yet. But I just haven't had time. been too busy. Anyhow, this article talks about President Donald Trump and his administration are contemplating halting stock markets next week. And there was a video I did just today in the morning or really in the afternoon. And I started and talked about that uh, what a lot of traders, a lot of analysts think is going to happen on Monday is we're gonna see a huge drop as soon as the market opens. So there's a couple possibilities. They're gonna open up the market. It's gonna trip, you know, the trip wire, the circuit is gonna be broken. It's gonna shut down immediately or it's gonna come It's gonna come up. It's gonna be okay for a while and it's gonna drop dramatically was what, what everybody believes is gonna happen on Monday. Or Trump and his administration are gonna step in during this week or maybe Monday and go, look, we're gonna stop all this right now. So this is, we're in uncharted territory. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Anyhow, moving on, the White House is currently considering grounding all passenger planes also and ordering a nationwide shelter. In order to curb panic, bipartisan U.S. representatives are considering plans to temporarily stop stock trading. Now, this is not unprecedented. This has happened in the past. We're going to get to that in a second. But my question was, what the heck is that? What did they say here? Uh, nationwide shelter. So, uh, Basically, a shelter in place or nationwide shelter order means residents will be asked to stay home and not leave their residence to travel unless it's an emergency. And that would be uh, nationwide. So right now we have New York, which that goes into effect, I believe, tomorrow. Today is Saturday, uh, March the 21st. Yeah, March 21st at almost 9 p.m. So uh, New York, Illinois and California. Uh, I know with New York, it goes into effect tomorrow, I think, at 8 p.m. Uh, Illinois, not for sure, and California, and they're already doing it. So those are three states out of 50, and if that happens, then it's going to be massive as far as an economic downturn because no one's going to work, or it's going to be tough to keep the economy moving along, that is for sure, even if you're doing any kind of teleconferencing. Anyhow, moving on, a little bit of history, but when I talked about this isn't unprecedented because it's happened before, 1933, FDR, Franklin D. Roosevelt, also stopped Wall Street with the Emergency Banking Act, which shut down the banking system, Wall Street trading, and the Federal Reserve's operations. I want to read this part here because I thought it was pretty, uh, pretty sound. It says, furthermore, FDR banned gold hoarding, and ordinary people's stashes of gold were stolen and repatriated. All the legislation FDR created on the New Deal made it so government examiners could investigate bank reserves and as soon as a bank was deemed financially secure 
it could reopen. And this is a, this is a concerning thing because this is kind of what happened in 2008. Uh, banks were caught short. They had over leveraged and they could not fill the gaps and they had a big huge problem if you want to understand it because i found it difficult myself take a look at that movie big short it kind of lays it all out but um essentially this is what happened before and it happened again and now it looks like we're happening again because now the fed's going out there and they're just printing money like crazy i mean it's like uh, we've had over 1.5 going up to two trillion dollars just printing money out of thin air just boom like that so is that economically feasible yeah We'll see. I don't think it's going to. It is, it is, but uh, we will find out very soon. Anyhow, one thing that President Trump and the administration cannot do, however, is stop the censorship-resistant cryptocurrency networks fueled by millions of peers. Unlike Wall Street trades, no one can stop people from transacting on the Bitcoin network, which has been operational for almost 100% of the time since its inception on January 3rd, 2009. Trump can't create a Bitcoin holiday and make it so people will stop trading Bitcoins and other digital assets. And here was the actual article in 1933. Banks of entire nation are closed for a brief holiday. That sounds like a fun time. A little holiday, a little break, everybody can relax. That's exactly the opposite of what was going on. But uh, that's how that's how you sell, that's how you spend something right there, ladies and gentlemen. You say it's a holiday instead of an incredible economic downturn. Amazing. So here's my thoughts. When I first got into this in 2017, I just had heard about Bitcoin. I was like, that's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. But as I got into it, I started to understand what was going on behind it. I'm like, wow, okay, this is great. It's, I mean, you can't confiscate it. It's censorship resistance. It's always up. It's fungible. It can be used as, you know, a store of value. Well, back then it was a, for, for transactions. And it's just a, a great overall use that we've never seen before. So all the things in the beginning of what Bitcoin and cryptocurrency digital assets were supposed to be, uh, I didn't really see it in the beginning because all I saw of it was just that piece of how can I make money off this? And I think we're all in the same boat for most of us. There's some of you who've been here more than five years and you have a lot of knowledge about it. And thanks for sticking around. I mean, that's amazing. So you've seen it and you believe in it. So when people start talking about, you know, <clears throat> I'm here for the technology, uh, some are just full of it. But uh, right now, as we see these unprecedented black swan events come about, the coronavirus, uh, the oil uh, prices taking a huge dump, uh, the actual stock market just going down to, down to the floor, all these different things that are happening. And then we look at the actual cryptocurrency market. I mean, it's amazing, quite honestly, because everything has been dumping. March 12th was the worst. It all dumped together. But have you seen what's happening? S&P 500 is still going down. Stock market is still going down. Stock market might not even open up. But yet, cryptocurrency has actually risen up, and we're looking at about 185 billion right now. And not only we're we staying resilient, we're keeping it at a baseline. We're actually improving on here on these points and and moving forward. So to me, I think it's amazing. And you would think that they would just go down and just go away. Now that's what a lot of people said it would, but it's not. And it's actually, I think, here to stay. I mean, I can actually. Can I'll think it. I know it. I, I know it's here to stay. It's happening right before our eyes. We're seeing all the things that I was privy to back then and I learned about it. I thought, well, that's a cute idea. Let's see if it actually pans out. Whatever. But now I actually see it happening right in front of my face. And now institution, investors, and even more people are going to understand what crypto is and what it can do. So once they, once you go through this type of turmoil, you've been tested. You know, you've you've gone through the fire. So if they can, if if Bitcoin and and the digital asset market can go through all this, not only come out uh, without being broken, but actually improved, can you imagine what's going to happen with all those people? Like, whoa, what's that? Because all my stocks just got obliterated. All the old money got obliterated. The Fed was printing money like crazy. Now we're in a bad place. Governments can't be trusted. And now look what we got. This stuff over here, I've never heard about. It. It's a new asset class. Crypt crypto what? Digital what? Bitcoin, I heard about that a long time ago. What's Ethereum? What's XRP? What's Tomato Coin? I don't know what this stuff is. And uh, they're going to learn all about it because they'll be like, wow, after all that economic downturn, all the things that happened, look what happened. 
I might have to buy into this. And to me, eventually, I think it'll lead to a big bump. I think we're we're in for a, a roller coaster ride for a bit, but in the end, I think it'll only go up. Moving on. So now that I just went on that little rant about how great it is, let's talk about prices about in the short term. So 7K, 8K, 5K, 3K, what's going on? So this was a pretty long article. And what I also want to do is just go and just throw out some numbers, okay? So first off, it talks about it's been a tremendous week for Bitcoin uh, as the price of Bitcoin rebounded from 3800 3, that's around March 12th, to $6,800 in about a week. That's an amazing uh, increase, and that sure as heck didn't happen in the stock market. So Bitcoin price rebounded from 3800 to 6940 rally of 81%. Try getting that kind of return anywhere else, doubtful. Now, this is all TA stuff. You guys know I'm not in big in a TA, so I'm just going to kind of skim over it and just go for the numbers because I do not go over all this stuff. I just don't do it. So the 5600 area broke to the upside, which indicated continuation to the up, leading the price to a high of 6940 Great. The resistance area is quite clear and found between 6400 to 6900 Unfortunately, the price of Bitcoin couldn't break through this resistance which was required to flip the trend bullish. So if they would have gone above 6,900, which it did test out, it just couldn't do it and it dropped back down to 6,000. Now I think we're at 6,200, somewhere around there. Anyhow, at this point, the market looks to make a bearish retest after an 80% surge, which we just talked about. So to our sense, the low at 3,800. The 5,600 support level is essential. Let me just say that one more time. The 5,600 support level is essential. If Bitcoin can hold this area as support, a possible new resistance test can occur. So all these you remember right here from this whole article, all this stuff, just remember 5,600 is that part that they're going to test. If it stays there or goes above, you can see it go to 7K, 8K. Who knows? But if it drops below, look out for 4,700, 4,000, 3,200 dollars. That's the big thing. $5,600. And then to take a look at, here's the bullish here's the bullish setup. So price of Bitcoin is going to hold the 5,600 level support. As long as that support holds, upward tests of the 6,500 to 6,900 are likely to occur. Maybe seven, maybe eight. Great. That'd be fantastic. However, the more likely thing is this. The 5,500 to 5,600 area is a crucial point, as discussed previously. Once the price of Bitcoin breaks below, okay, I just said that. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay. This is, a, this is the crux of it. Is it a bad thing if it goes below $5,600? No, because those prices are low. People are going to want to come back in. I've got money on the sidelines, and I can't wait for that opportunity to happen because I will definitely snatch some up because I know exactly where this is going after everything we just talked about. So there's also three levels to watch out for if it goes below $5,600. 4700 to 4800 area, then 4200 and then 3750 So the whole article can be something like this. If it goes, if it holds 5,600 and stays above it for a week's time or so, you're going to look for maybe uh, seven, seven k, maybe eight k. It's going to go up. We're going to be good. If it doesn't hold 5,600, look for these levels: 47, 42, 37, 50. For me, I'm going to set my buy orders around these areas. I don't like to do round numbers because everybody uses round numbers, so I might pick uh, 47, 18 or maybe 46, uh, 78 or something like that. Then maybe 41, 82, and then uh, maybe 38, 20, I don't know. So somewhere around there, and you can dollar cost average in, which I'm always talking about, and that's what I'm gonna do, up to you what you wanna do for your risk level, so on and so forth. So try to catch that falling knife. And next story. Last up, Russia's central bank seeks to ban crypto issuance and circulation. This was, a difficult one to go over because it had a lot of nuances, uh, but I can pretty much break it down to the easiest level. Okay, so according to a legal executive at the Bank of Russia, a bill on digital financial assets will ban the issuance and circulation of cryptocurrencies. Before there's there was another uh, bill on the table that got rewritten, and now it's like at first they were kind of lenient, now they're like, nope, not going to do it. But remember, uh, this is being pushed through by the central bankers of Russia. Uh, Let's keep going. The amended document will apparently prohibit nearly everything about crypto except holding, according to Guznov's latest remarks. And Guznov is, where's that guy? 
Oh, it's in the next, it's in the next article. Uh, Guznov is the uh, main banker there, so sure, whatever. The official said that the upcoming law will explicitly prohibit the issuance and circulation of cryptocurrency and make it a violation. And then he says some stuff, which is nonsense. Besides claiming that the crypto bill would ban Russian financial institutions from issuing digital assets, Guznov provided little clarity about the upcoming bill. When asked whether the Bank of Russia wants to ban residents, this is big, from converting crypto into local fiat, the Russian ruble or foreign currency, Guznov did not provide a direct answer. And he just talks about if a person owns, for example, bitcoins, he completes a transaction in a jurisdiction, a state, a county, or whatever they have in Russia, in a jurisdiction that does not prohibit this, we are unlikely to be able to regulate that, essentially meaning we're not going to allow it. So... This was the interesting part here. While Russia's Ministry of Finance has been trying to legalize cryptocurrencies in the country, the central bank has apparently been fighting to ban Russians from legally using crypto at all. So look at that. The Ministry of Finance says, we should do this. Central banks are like, we don't want to do this because we don't want to lose power. Ministry of Finance is like, this is good for the people. Central banks are like, no, we don't like the people. We like money. And that's pretty much how it goes all around the world. While prohibiting local entities from issuing their own digital assets, the central bank has been considering the emission of its own digital currency. In December 2019, bank's head, Elvira Nabgulina, said the institution was exploring the possibility of issuing a digital ruble. Whatever. It's a baby step. You're going to move into cryptocurrency anyhow, so just get on with it. So this whole article was based on this report. And this is from interfax.ru. It looks like it's a Russia publication. Here's Gaznov, director of the Central Bank Department. Where is he at? Yeah, Alexei Guznov. And it, what's pretty cool about you got to love Google Translate because this is all in Russian. And you just click a button and boom, it's all in, all in English, which <laughs> my favorite language. So, I mean, all this stuff, I mean, all it, it's the same type of thing, right? And they're all worried about the same type of thing. You can look at central banks in England. You can look at them in Australia, you can look in the US, you can look at them in India, you can look at them in Russia. They're all concerned about the same thing. I'm not going to read this part, it's kind of boring. Um, he states here Is there a consensus in the bill about cryptocurrency? We believe that there are great risks in legalizing the circulation of cryptocurrency, both in terms of financial stability and the system of combating money, money laundering, and in terms of protecting consumer rights. That is a playbook from every single central bank out there. They all say the same thing. And it's like they all get together, surprise, and they talk about what they're going to do to combat this issue. And this is like the same playbook all over the place. So to me, when I read all these things, and <clears throat> you can really dig into it, but it really wouldn't matter because here's the thing, what's going to happen. To me, in my mind, it's all like India again. India had a ban. The central banks banned cryptocurrency digital assets. They said, we don't want them. We don't want them. And then they got sued and they, and they said, and they had to go to the actual, like, I guess what would be like the Supreme Court of India. And they said, look, this is going against consumer rights and you can't do this to us. This is our money. We're going to decide where we're going to spend it. You can't force us to do this. And it took a while. I think it took like over two, was it two years or a year and a half? It took a while. I mean, will the justice move slow? And they finally just won like, what, two weeks ago? Somebody correct me on that one. And um, so right now it's legal in India to own and uh, trade cryptocurrencies. And it's a huge win for for the people of India to be able to decide what they're going to do with their money and invest into it. It's amazing to me in this day and age that you can lock these types of things down, but it happens more often than not. So to me, I think the same thing's going to happen in Russia. Uh, Ministry of Finance says this is good. I've heard Putin say that, I mean, not personally, I'm like a hang out with Putin, but I've heard Putin in, in different uh, publications say that uh, cryptocurrency is not a bad thing. So if you have those two players in the game, and then you have the central banks going, nah, not really, but they're losing time and time and time again. I think their number's up. And if it has to go even to the courts, I don't know how it works in Russia, but if it worked in India and other places, probably the same thing. They would go through it and go, look, you're trampling on our rights and we want to be able to use this. Probably deals will be made in the background and it'll eventually get passed because uh, you can't stop it. You can't stop it, uh, just like the other article that we talked about. So that's how I see it. All right. Thanks for uh, sticking with me through the rants. One little long way than sometimes. If you got time, stick around with me. Let's go over the scam of the day. So 
Scam of the day. Um, why do we do this? We do this because 2020 is going to be a big year as soon as we get rid of this uh, coronavirus. And I, I would like to say this. There was this, it was a prominent scientist. It was on Twitter. And he was talking about to alleviate people's fears of the coronavirus. And he said, look, it's tough enough uh, when we have people just working on one thing in one country uh, throughout the entire globe. But when you bring all the smartest minds together, and all the people together, and they're all working on one thing to eradicate and fix one essential problem, he goes, there's no way that it can't be defeated. He goes, we can eradicate, we can move, we can do anything that we want to do as long as we have the people and the power behind it. And I thought that was a pretty great quote. I do not see this thing lasting. I do see this thing turning around. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So scam of the day, I have to get off course. We do this because 2020 is going to be a big year and people are going to get screwed out of their money by these types of scammers. So I started this in January. I've been pretty successful getting rid of all these scams that we found on YouTube. I don't know why YouTube can't do this. So they can remove, they can give me a warning a couple of weeks ago for one of my videos that had really nothing to do with anything, but yet they can't get rid of real scams. So whatever. So in the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a link. It's going to say, Scam of the day. And when you click on that link and take his handy dandy uh, Google spreadsheet or form as a spreadsheet. And uh, what I want you to do, if you had time, is just click on the latest scam. So we're going to click on this uh, link here and take us to this video. So in this video, how do we know it's a scam? I mean, don't just trust me. Do your own research, right? But so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the comment section first. And, uh, well, a lot of people don't like it. But, you know, maybe when Mullet, maybe this guy just is a big hater on Binance airdrops. He just is a hater, right? And a lot of people are just haters. So we can't just rely on that. Let's take a look at what it says here. What we're looking for is what I call asymmetrical giveaway. So if you see stuff like this, if you send one Bitcoin to this address, you'll be airdropped five Bitcoin. If you send five Bitcoin, we'll give you 25 Bitcoin. Wow, what a great deal. No, it's not. And I know, like you're thinking to yourself, well, it sounds so stupid when uh, Digital Asset says it. Well, yeah, because it, it, it is stupid if you really just say it out loud. So uh, we need to stop this. And I will tell you this. If you ever are in doubt about if someone's giving away free stuff or whatever else and you're like kind of unsure, just send an email to the official website. Like you can send this, you could you could email Binance right now and go, hey, are you giving away 25 Bitcoin if I send you five? <laughs> They'll tell you no. Uh, you can go, I mean, Ripple or to Gemini or to Coinbase or wherever, whoever's got an official website, just go there and just drop them an email. You'll be, you'll be happy that you did because you won't get screwed out of your money. All right, so you are inoculated into getting scammed, but for the other people who don't watch my videos, which uh, maybe they should, just saying, that uh, maybe it's a good idea to help them out so they don't have to see this type of trash. So what we're gonna do is we're going to down uh, vote this, which I already did. Then we're gonna click on these three dots here and we're gonna report it. And we're gonna say, hey, this is spam. I'm gonna choose one. Hey, this is scam and fraud. I'm gonna click next, I'm gonna say, hey, this is a scam. And you can put whatever colorful language you want. I mean, no profanity. But uh, that's it, and that's all I need you to do. If you could do that, it takes like 10 seconds. Uh, and if you do the other ones, it'd be great. I really appreciate that, and that would help out other everybody else. So that's it. So listen, thanks for sticking me all the way to the end. If you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two that are gonna pop up to your left and right. Uh, YouTube curates them for you, whatever uh, you're into as far as cryptocurrency on my channel. And that's it. So uh, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.